things that's really interesting about scripture is there are a variety of books of scripture that are penned by a variety of different prophets, sages, kings, commoners, apostles, and even people who are unknown. In the New Covenant, there is a book called Hebrews, which typically would today be called Messianic Jews. And as I've read either Hebrews or Messianic Jews, I really believe that this is a book in Scripture that is a transcription of a specific sermon. Now, the interesting thing about this specific sermon is whoever preached this sermon seems to have been in major agreement with Rav Shaul, also called the Apostle Paul. But it doesn't appear that Rav Shaul or the Apostle Paul preached this sermon himself. And some of the greetings in this indicate that this was a person who was known to a variety of people in this apostolic cohort that surrounded Rav Shaul. But what we have is we have a full sermon here. And the full sermon here is preached by someone who is essentially anonymous. And if you go to scholars, if you go to Bible commentaries, if you go other places trying to figure out who it was that preached this sermon, you will find a variety of people who have a variety of opinions. But in the end, this very powerful sermon is unknown as to its authorship. So in the midst of this sermon that's being preached, this powerful teacher and expositor and encourager goes through biblical history and talks about the heroes of the faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And there is a reflection on a variety of people who went before who were faithful to God, who followed God, and this preacher sees just how heroic these people who stood in different generations and different times, who related to God and held on to the truth, actually were. And one of the things that I would argue is people have said you can be moral without believing in God. And that's true. People have said you can be smart without believing in God. And that's true. And often what ends up happening is intellectuals who don't believe in God or who don't want to believe in God will end up taking people who believe in God and turn them into a straw man whereby they are made fun of for being unsophisticated or not being smart in the area that the the wise men who are agnostic or atheist are smart in. You know, it's very simple and very easy to become smart in one specific area. But sometimes it takes you decades. And sometimes to become expert in a specific area of study can take you five to eight years of study to learn about the area and another 15, 20, 25, 30 years to end up truly mastering the area to the point where with your study and with your practice you have become good at something. That's all fine. But just because you're smart in one area doesn't necessarily make you smart in another area. And one of the things that I think really has been missed by secular humanists by agnostics, by atheists, by academics, by people who are excellent at speaking, excellent at rhetoric, and excellent at debate. One of the things that I do believe that they miss is simply because they're smart in biology, or they're smart in physics, or they're smart in some other area, doesn't necessarily make them expert in terms of the human heart. 
So with the discussion of Hebrews, the discussion of Scripture, the discussion of what the unknown preacher of Messianic Jews or Hebrews says, I think there's a perception here. And I think that there's wisdom in the perception. And the perception is that those who have followed God, those who have walked with him, those who have applied themselves thoroughly to learning about God over the course of their lives have turned out, they didn't start that way, but they have turned out to be people of courage, people of heroism, people who have been examples of courage for their generation and for the generations that have followed them. And so understanding and knowing this, I think that when people argue that biblical faith isn't necessary, having a belief in God isn't necessary, there are many things that can be done without a belief in God. But honestly, when push comes to shove, one of the things that I really believe is going on and that we need to understand is that a people who have a faith in God are going to be way more courageous than a people, on average, who don't know God. Likewise, at the same time, people who have an understanding that this life is not the end, but they believe that God has plans for them past this life, are willing to be more reckless with this present age and with this present life. They're even willing to stand for justice. They're willing to stand for truth. They're willing to stand for their kinsmen. They're willing to stand in love. They're willing to follow the example of a Messiah who did not hold it out onto his own life, but instead laid down his life so greater benefit could come to those who would follow after him in subsequent generations. And so like too, the followers of Yeshua the Messiah are willing, if God calls them to, to lay down their own lives because they believe that the seed of laying down their own lives will bring forth a harvest that will be cared for and tended to by a God who totally loves them. And so understanding that this is the difference between a secular humanist who believes when you're dead, you're dead, and believes that nothing good happens thereafter, and a biblical believer who believes that God so loved the world that he gave his son, and that all who belong to him shall have life, and the life shall be abundant, and the life shall be ongoing, and that death is not the end of the life, but it's just a transition into something that God has prepared for us, you would see that it would make perfect sense that the secular humanist would not be able to lay down his or her life as willingly as the believer in the biblical narrative, in the biblical faith. This is a difference between believers and those who have not believed. And so with this, I want to share with you just a couple verses at the end of what's called the Heroes of the Faith chapter in Messianic Jews or Hebrews chapter 11. It goes, with all these witnesses to faith around us like a cloud, we must throw off every encumbrance, every sin to which we cling, and run with resolution the race for which we are entered, our eyes fixed on Yeshua, on whom faith depends from start to finish. Yeshua, who for the sake of the joy that lay ahead of him, endured the execution stake, making light of its disgrace, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. There is hope in this, and it makes a courageous people. Shalom.